test. All right. <clears throat> Hello, Games and Quick Committee for SGDQ 2020. I'm Rox, and I'm going to be submitting Kirby Nightmare Dreamland 80% and Kirby Nightmare Dreamland 100%. Uh, the second will be a race with a music wheel. Um, I'm only going to be doing this post commentary over my 100% PB because it's very similar to any percent uh, with just little more things here and there. There are 17 switches throughout the game that in 100% you need to hit, and you don't hit those in any percent. So there's a little bit of a route difference in the later levels, but the first two worlds are exactly the same uh, from 100% to any percent. And yeah, let's get this started. So at the very beginning, you're gonna see me go for an attempt, go for something called wheel mix, which is a four frame window. It looks random, but it's actually um, where you start the mix is the same every time. Um, I'm gonna be going for something called recoil mix, which is basically, I can slide off of this wildie right here and grab the two wildies to initiate the mix. And mix is where you grab two enemies that give powers at the same time and suck them up and hit down. So you initiate the mix wheel and depending on which enemy you suck up first, that's the enemy which initiates the mix wheel. The mix wheel is always in a set order and each ability is there for a total of four frames until you get to the very later ends of the mix wheel, but you're not going to see any of that in this run. So one one's pretty simple. Uh, one two is also pretty simple. Um, at the end of every level, there's going to be something called goal games, which is where you have to hit A or B on like the first three or the fifth frame in order to get the optimal pattern. Oh, right there, you just saw the drive-by strat, which is where we go, lose wheel, suck up two wildies, instantly kill the boss, then suck up wheel again. Really cool strat, because double stars do so much damage. Um, but goal games are... Actually, we can see right up here, because it's the very end of this level. You go in, you get this trampoline. Um, that's the second frame. Goal game right there. You want optimally first frame. Uh, but third frame also works, and fifth frame also works well. Um, at least good enough. But optimally, you want to hit first three frames. If you hit fourth frame, you have to do this super slow climbing animation, um, which loses like three seconds, and it's really not fun. Um, so yeah, getting wheel in 1-1 one, one saves optimally 9 seconds, um, but this is the level where things come together anyway, because we grab a burning person, a burning, yeah, right there, a flamer, that's what they're called, they're called flamers, um, and that's 1-3, that hothead at the end of 1-3 can give bad RNG, he bad RNG for me there, you usually want him to not shoot fire, because if he shoots fire, you have like a very small window to get past the door, get past them into the door. So you just usually have to puff up into them. This is frosty. We just hold right and start slamming the wall, and then the back of our burning hits them. Burning is really good in Nightmare in Dreamland. It's um, unlike other GBA games or GBA Kirby games like Amazing Mirror or Squeak Squad. Uh, you can burn up slopes, um, which is really cool. And it's really helpful. So right here, we're going to be finishing World 1. Like I said, there's no switches in World 1. The first two worlds are the exact same in 100% as they are in 100%. But we're heading to Wispy Woods. And Wispy Woods is kind of a joke, as it is in all Kirby games. Um, he's got a decent amount of invincibility frames, though meaning that you can't just mash uh, the burning button. You have to time your inputs. And we want to grab the wand and land in the center of the screen, because if not, Kirby has to walk to the center of the screen and then to do his little dance, kind of like in Mega Man 3 um, or other games like that. You want to be in the middle after you kill a boss. And you want to try to not bounce after grabbing the boss wand. So we're going to try to like do a little puff, like a few pixels before... Um, we grab the wand, so we um, miss the puff. And you saw me screw it up a little bit there, but yeah. This tornado guy in 2-1, one, 
he can either go or not go, the first one. The second one, it's scary if he goes, but it doesn't lose time. The first one, if he goes, you're losing time. You have to wait, like, a second and a half. If he doesn't go, you're golden. Next up is 2-2. Two, two. Uh, we're going to see our second instance of wheel. Wheel is the fastest horizontal moving ability in the game. Um, so we're going to try to utilize it as much as possible. Burning is also one of the faster horizontal moving abilities in the game. Um, right there, might be in my jump of the cut in or something. I forget what happened. But right here we're doing another double star. We're going to release our wheel to grab the hothead and then bam, insta-kill or release the burning and then grab the star with the hothead to insta-kill the wheelie. So now we have wheel again. Wheel is really interesting because you can't jump with it like you can in uh, Amazing Mirror Squeak Squad. But, and usually if you cancel it normally by just hitting B, you're just going to do the slide animation, which this is a ton of time. But there's a way to get around that by hitting the run button um, before and after you hit the B button. It's like right, be right. Then you're going to be able to just run out of wheel, as you saw me do right there. And that's really helpful. It saves a lot of time over the course of the run for something so minor because of just how much, how many times we use wheel. Uh, right here, this is 2-3. This is a new strat, a new-ish strat um, called 2-3 wheel, which saves around 10 seconds over not keeping wheel. Basically, we're going to be trying to keep wheel through this arena and with the set of drops and spits and sucks, Basically, when you drop an ability star, there is a certain amount of time before it fades out into, you know, before it you know, just stops existing. So we need to drop it twice in order to keep the timer, to reset the timer, in order to get wheel again. And wheel saves a lot of time, as you'll see throughout this run, because it just, you're able to move so fast horizontally. Right there, wheel bonked the wrong way. Nice job, past me. But yeah, this is 2-4, which is now with the introduction to 2-3 wheel, it's become a lot more difficult. Usually you grab that Sparky that we just killed. Um, but with wheel, we have to do two two-frame inputs right here um, to not get hit by TikTok. And you sometimes it can be more um, depending on what pattern TikTok gives you. TikTok gave me a really good pattern there, though. And that scarfing room is really hard, too. Uh, wheel is really difficult to control um and there's it's hard to tell when to time to start your wheel because there's a certain amount of frames that wheel isn't really active when you're initiating it and you can't do anything in that time period so and that's usually the problem in the sparking room uh right here this is where the two rats uh meet up again uh the wheel and no wheel route Basically, in this room right here, there's wheels. That's usually where you grab wheel. 2-5 is an interesting level because there's a trick called the subpixel. Um, it's in this room right here. I can't remember if I get it in this run or not. Um, I don't, yeah. So right there on that platform where I just had to kill the cutter, uh, the Sir Kibble. Um, if you get the right subpixel, it's more or less RNG dependent, you can not bonk there, and it saves a good amount of time. That's a fun little thing. And now we have high jump. We're gonna keep be keeping high jump throughout the entirety of World Three, um, and it's my favorite ability in the game. Um, a lot of people say that it's really fun to use. It's got a few cool mechanics. So this is the boss of World Two. This is ta Paint Roller, and right here you're gonna see me go for a strat called Task Roller. I messed it up a little bit, but I still get the good RNG. There's a one in three chance that uh, you get the good pattern for Task Roller. Um, I did miss a hit earlier, but which didn't lose that much time. As you can see, I'm still very close to my gold there. So yeah, this is where the route starts um, changing a bit. This is with um, where we start introducing switches. Um, oh, this is a TikTok fight, and you saw you can cancel high jump actually with by hitting the B button again, and you want to be able to time your high jumps so you're doing the damage of being next to the next to the enemy with high jump and the closer you are to an enemy with high jump the more damage you do and you want to be able to cancel it as well which does a little bit of damage and there's our first switch down that little area um let's do later one tile gaps is they're really rough and you have to go through two of them to get that switch um because you just have a very tight 
frame window. So right here, we have 3-2. This is a pretty notorious stage, uh, one of the most difficult ones because of the minions at the end. Um, usually, we used to grab sword and kill um, Bugsy with sword, but we found that it was faster to kill him with high jump, and that's what we're going to be using here. Basically, we don't have to wait for those penguin guys, and this is Bugsy. You want to land on top of him and then cancel right above him. I missed the cancel there, but that was a decently clean fight. And yeah, and we get to keep high jump. It's great. It's a really fun strat, but it's incredibly inconsistent. Um, it's not incredibly inconsistent. It's just Bugsy's RNG, and it's really difficult to get the right pattern. So we're heading to 3-3 now. 3-3 is interesting. Um, if you don't do the high jump Bugsy route, you grab high jump here. Um, the enemy I just jumped over. And I'm having struggle getting to the door. What? <laughs> yeah, doors can be rough in this game. You only have a few like pixels of blue white in order to get into it, actually. Um, that room right there was just kind of, you know, I'll wait for the door to open. And this is supposed to be maze, but, you know, we know the route. Really easy maze. So next up is the 3-4 arena. It's the second arena in the game. Um, first in 2-3, of course. But basically, arenas is where Midnight Knight summons his clones or whatever. And all of them try to... Not clones, but his minions. And all of them try to kill you. Um, but... This, this arena went through a bunch of variations where we used to drop high jump uh, and then suck it back in, very similar to what we did with 2-3 wheel. However, it was found faster to be faster and more consistent um, to keep high jump. Now, many people argue that's less consistent. I think it's more consistent. I also, more consistent. I also think it's a lot more fun. Um, it's one of my favorite arenas in the game, for sure. But next up, we have... 3-5, this is the shortest level in 100%. Uh, very simple, you just high jump up, you grab the invincibility candy. Uh, you'll notice we slide off ledges, that's because sliding is the fastest form of movement uh, without you know a wheel or burning or anything like that horizontally. However, there's a lot of end lag, so we can only really do it off ledges. But next up is 3-6, our second switch in the game, where We have a strat called KO Boomer. I named the strat. It's right there. Bam. Kill the Boomer. That's actually a three frame window to get that um, crash bomb. And yeah. Next up we have... Oh, this, this is the next waiting room. The fog room. Uh, this is a strat called the Around the World. It's not really a strat. It's just kind of something to do to waste time. It's fun to do. And we're going to be heading into this room where we grab our next switch. Um... Switches are semi-hidden throughout the game. They're not that hard to find. It's a Kirby game after all, so 100%ing it isn't necessarily the hardest thing in the world. Now, this is the dark room. One of two in the game. Um, you just can't see the blocks, but we know the route. You can get by pretty easily. And then this is the final climb of World 3 before we're heading to the boss, um, which is Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright. Um, th those are the official names, or just like to call it the sun and the moon. Um, I'm on team moon crew. Basically, we always guess moon, because moon is always right. Um, but yeah, you just do high jumps and cancels, and right there, you see me grab the wand at the very bottom of the screen, um, in order to not bounce after grabbing it, which saves a decent amount of time, like a second or so. So, next up... We got World 4. World 4 is my least favorite world in the game, personally. Um, and we get to switch from High Jump. High Jump, of course, is the fastest vertical moving ability in the game. But, um, you know, Butter Building is the only world that's really vertical. Um, where all the levels go in like a vertical direction. Which is a really cool, you know, concept. But right here, we have our next switch in this little irregularity in the pattern of the black maze to get the switch right here and next up we're going to see another mix 
It's consists of the four one wheel mix. Basically, I got the I got the best RNG there where I was able to jump on top of the platform there because you need you need to suck up the sword guy first. Um, and it's fourth in the mix. You just gotta wait for uh, sixteen frames or so to get the mix, and I nail it there, and that's a really cool strat. Next up, we have. 4-2, that jump right there is also very difficult because of it being a one-tile gap and one-tile wheel jump. Um, if you hit A and B at the same time, you can jump uh, with wheel, and you're going to see that throughout the run as well. Um, this is the first instance, of, first instance, oh no, second instance of swimming in this game. Swimming is not too bad in this game. I actually really enjoy swimming in this game compared to other Kirby games such as Amazing Mirror. So now we're going to grab Sparky and head into the Poppy Bros fight. Um, there's a few RNG patterns you can get. I did not get a good one here. Um, so you're going to have to see me chasing the two bros around. But there's a cool shot I can do. I found my Cesare box, Cesare Baco. What unfortunately can show it off there. Next up, you have another switch in 4 3. 4 3 is another decently straightforward level. Um,. Right here we're going to see our first instance of wind, where basically the wind kind of blows us around, you know, kind of like Lost Levels C3. It's wind, not too much to explain there. But right here we have to go in the right door in order to get the switch, because um, if we miss that door then we're screwed and we have to restart the level. So we have to go in the store. You just have to remember it. A, a lot of the difficulty in this run is actually remembering to get all the switches especially if you're an any percent runner but now we have high jump again we used to keep sparky actually throughout this section but we found it faster to keep high jump due to the last room in this run being on how vertical it is so we don't have to float up uh we can just high jump up and floating is very slow compared to high jump next up we have four four 4-4 four four is a uh, fun level in our first instance of Fan Fan, which is a mini boss. We'll see Fan Fan later in the run. Right here, I attempt a wheel mix in 4-4. Four four. Basically, I got it there. You want to grab the sword by sword guy first again. If you get ball, it's a much more difficult mix. Um, it's like the 1-1 one, one wheel mix, but like two abilities shorter, so it's difficult to time, especially with the 1-1 one, one wheel mix muscle memory. But this saves around five seconds. Um... It's it's a cool mix. It really doesn't take that much time because there's a wheelie just right up there in that room we just passed. So now we're going to grab Sparky and we're going to be killing Fan Fan. The strat here is to hold left right before you get to him. And yeah, that's you just hold the spark button and then he's dead. This is the block room. This room is really difficult. A lot of tight jumps and tight sparks. Um, it's hard to keep your momentum throughout. Um, and that last beam guy can give you, the waddle can give you a rough pattern and can just make you lose a little bit of time and you lose spark um that's also a slightly new innovation in the route is because we used to actually grab throw from fan fan but now we just grab sparky or we just keep spark and do this level powerless because there's um, a strat found in the arena here found by sniper sr where you can just do a cool little double star and kill multiple enemies multiple enemies at the same time and yeah, it's really fun. But you have to move quick, so that mace guy at the very beginning can screw you up. But getting the double star lets you kill, lets you grab two, two enemies at once and makes it faster. So now we're grabbing burning. Burning, burning is interesting, especially in this section. You can get a down warp here. I don't get it here, but it's, it's fun. We like to say nice down warp um, because it's like the one instance of down warps in this run. Seems very well made. There's very few glitches, and none are useful. They're just kind of funny. Right here, this is a 4-6. This is another one of those notoriously not fun levels in the run. These frogs are completely RNG and where they go. The first one gave me a bad pattern. The second one gave me a good pattern. A scary pattern. But now we're going to grab uh, the Sword Knight. And this is TikTok again. Ooh, TikTok gave me... The slide to the DMs pattern there, where he just like does the tango, turns around and slides back around. This switch is probably the hardest switch to remember um, in the run. It's in the dark room. If you're not paying attention, it's very easy to f 
forget about it. Now, right here, someone's downstairs. Oh, that's um, that's stone. That rocky is RNG as well. Either he jumps or not. Usually, next time we have sword, we have the sword. We have sword there, um, so we're able to. Slice it. Actually, in Hundo, we usually have sword there. I lost it there, though. <laughs> so we're able to just jump for a precaution. So we're going to grab high jump at the end of 4-6 rather than Krako because it's like a quarter of a second faster. And uh, Krako is interesting because it's the only boss where there's like a level beforehand. Um, we just have to climb up. And now we have Krako. There are two strats here Krako singles or Krako doubles. Singles are a little faster. Um, but I go for the doubles here. I find it a little more safer. It's easier to get a kill. And yeah, that's Krakow. So next up is Yogurt Yard, World 5, or Level 5 as they call it. 5 1. This is another switch that's pretty easy to forget because it's so similar to what we do in any percent. <coughs> Excuse me. But we grab Stone, go in this little room here, and then we just hit B, and then we just fall. Stone is the fastest falling ability in the game, and it you know can go through the blocks, and that's really useful for that section right there. So, you know this final room, the round to five two, we see our first instance of ball. Ball is another one of my favorite abilities in this game. It's the most powerful ability in this game as we will see later in the run. But this is its first showing um, at 80% or 100%. That fish right there turns around when he reaches that gap thing. So while it looks like we're about to get hit by it, we actually don't, which is nice. So this is ball right here, bouncing around. We need to, we need to control it. It's really difficult to, to control it. Right here, go for a strike called Pots Ball. I screw it up royally, but basically you can just use ball and bounce throughout this area. Right here, I go for a strat called Cocoon Climb. Found my own fake cocoon. You just climb up. But we're gonna be we're gonna be seeing a strat later like that. That's that I invented. Yeah, this is Tonkers. It's Task Bonkers. Bam, two hits with ball. Ball's so powerful. And this is five two ball swag, found by me and Marsh. <clears throat> with ball, he's also faster than Kirby's running and Kirby's running speed normally, either when you're like bouncing or just rolling. So ball is incredibly useful throughout the run. So this is high jump again. Really, 5-3 is just a showcase of the two fastest abilities in the game. High jump vertically. And then now we grab wheel and wheel horizontally. Wheel... It feels fun to use, especially this section, because we don't have to hit any buttons. We have to hit like three buttons. So, yay. But next up is the black room. Um, this room, you have to do a very precise wheel jumps in order to not fall through any platforms, which happens way too much. But now this is the Shastern room. You can make it just wheeling in between all of them. That's really difficult. But if you miss, it's not the end of the world, because uh, we grab burning in the next level anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. So, here we're going to be grabbing Burning. It's actually really easy to grab a block because um, the game prioritizes blocks over enemies. Um, right here you see me go for a strat called the Cobra Doubles. Um, I don't go for it for the second time, but the first time I do go for it, it's a two-frame window. I don't get it. Right there, I just try to go for the Desi Triple, um, which I failed, unfortunately. But it doesn't matter. We, we drop Burning right here to do... 5-4 arena. This is my favorite arena in the game and also my favorite level in general in the game. Basically, I got hit by the um, knight right there. Didn't even matter because you have to wait anyway. It's kind of kind of an auto but it's like really fun. You get a cool double kill at the end sometimes. And this is ball swag. Ball swag is free. Um, that's the joke because many people have died to ball swag multiple times. It's not fun, but the strat itself is really fun. And right here, this is the 5-4 switch. Um, it's my, and we're gonna be seeing a strat here called the Rocks Ball or the Rocks Climb. 
Um, it's really difficult to get in Hundo, but 90% you would just slide to the slide to a crevice in the bottom left, and then go into ball and you just build up a ton of momentum. You can shoot to the top, but in 100%, there's you can sort of do that, but it's really precise and the angles you need and when you hit the ground with ball is super super precise and it's pretty rare to get honestly but it's cool when we get it and saves a decent amount of time it's a lot more safer it's a lot safer too because we don't get hit by the sparkies so right there one tail gaps ruining me but this is an interesting switch we have to grab a fire then drop it then grab a high jump and make it into this cannon um we usually just skip all this with ball in any percent But we have high jump now. So there's a mini boss in the next and or coming up soon, which is Fire Lion. And Fire Lion goes out with two hits from ball. Um but it's optimal to get a three sight or three three jump with um with high jump. So right here we're gonna get as close to him as possible, and then bam, dead. That's a really cool strat. And the next up, we're seeing a strat um, that I also found called Five Five Wheel. Basically, it's second in the mix, just like that. You get wheel. It saves like a half second. Um, getting to that door is actually really tight. You only have a few frames to cancel and then hit up, and that's just a lot of inputs in a very short amount of time. But it, yeah, five wheels saves time because you can wheel to the last section and you don't have to grab wheel here. This is where the run starts to differ from 90% immensely. Usually we just wheel through the section with wheel, so you don't have to worry about the 5-6 switch. However, with wheel, with, you know, 5-6, we need to grab hammer. And hammer is one of the few, few um, abilities that can break metal blocks. Wheel cannot. Wheel can, no, yeah. Wheel can, but not underwater. So, hitting underwater, hammers might be the only one, actually. Maybe stone can. I don't know if stone can be used underwater. Oh, well. But yeah, that's a switch. Usually, if you don't know what you're, if you don't, that's, casually, that's one of the most difficult switches. Because you can't just wheel underwater. Be very useful. But... This is another interesting round change that we do from end percent because we have hammer already. We do a hammer mix or a ball mix if you're crazy. Um, to it's kind of it's very similar to what we did to get hammer here, but we go back to five six to grab hammer again, um, which is an instant mix. You just have to hold down to get the mix, and you get hammer, and that's what we have to do for heavy mall. Because if we wheel used to wheel in heavy mall, the ground can is wheel throughable. Like you can wheel through it, and that's not fun. So this is Orange Ocean. This is World 6. This is where things are really interesting. There's a switch in every level in the game, or in the in this world. But we're going to be going for an 80% strat here that was recently implemented into 100% called 6-1 Wheel Mix, where we mix wheel off the Sparky and the Flamer. That's third in the mix. And then wheel look right there, and we can just, bam, get the switch like that. So, right here, this section's, oh my god, <laughs> this section's really difficult um, with wheel. We, we used to do it with uh, burning, uh, which is a lot more consistent, but wheels just, it saves another 10 seconds at 90%. Um, and a little less than 100%, but still a good time save. So next up in 6-2, these frogs are RNG based. And they're really annoying. But we're going to go into this very conveniently placed crevice with a very convenient stone enemy. Because um, we need stone to break a peg. Wheel cannot break pegs. Hammer can and stone can. Um, there's a mix you can do off those first two enemies, but it's RNG based. So I usually don't go for it because if you don't get it, it's more or less run dead. We grab stone, we stone the peg, and yeah, that's 6-2 switch. Now we're going to be grabbing high jump down here for a very short amount of time just to climb up the section right here. 
Um, and then now we're going to be going for the 6-2 wheel mix, which is using the flamer of the tornado in order to get wheel again. Now, we're not going to be keeping wheel for very long. In any percent, we just keep wheel through this entire section. And really, we keep wheel through the entirety of World 6. It's not the, but that, but I lost wheel there. That's not the end of the world at all. Because up next in 6-3 is the most difficult mix in the game. I still golded that? What? Um, it's the most difficult mix in the game. This is 6-3 UFO mix. UFO mix is very late in the mix wheel. And... This is where most runs go to die. Bam. Throw first try. Throw is one to four frames. It's the it's the ability right before UFO in the mix wheel. I get second try in this PB. But really, we need UFO here because it saves 15 seconds over the old trap, which is killing Vonkers and then getting Hammer to hammer this block. Um, or if you get a first try, it saves 15 seconds. But you can, like, miss it for five tries and you still save time. But we can go right into this door and just uh, fire off this... Fire off a laser and burn the string. Which we would have to go to the other room. Uh, if you saw in the water room earlier. Get a laser. Go all the way back. Laser the fire. Laser that hothead. And then laser the... Um, what's it called? The string. That's just very out of the way. So that's, if you get that first try, that's 15 seconds saved. Um, fortunately, I got a second try in this run. But yeah. So, next up, we have 6-4. 6-4 is one of my favorite levels on uh, 100%. 100%, it's pretty boring. Because you have a wheel in uh, any percent. And we just wheel through this next room. This room with wheel is so fun. Um, I'm really the only one who thinks that though. But with 100% you're powerless. You just kind of go. Um, this switch. It's called the H switch. Because we miss this one in the run. We're going to go like H. Then we get sad. But yeah. Basically... This is the, that's that's a switch. It's very simple. We don't need any abilities for it. It's just kind of hidden. In Kirby's Adventure, which this game is a remake of, more or less a remake, um, it's, I think it's way better than Kirby. It's Kirby's Adventure. But, um, it's that's actually really difficult to find because there's no, like, indication, no, like, door there indicating that there's a switch there. So, next up is 6-5, and there's a recent development in the route um, called 6-5 Burning Mix. It's one of the least favorite strats I've found in this game. It's super inconsistent, and you're going to see I really screwed up in this run here. Um, this, yeah, we have to grab the hothead, which can turn around and kill you. And then we usually have to mix burning there, which I nail. Okay. That's not the hard part. The hard part for me is, bam, right there. If you don't get the jump, that, um, the Waddle Duke can kill you. Oh, yeah. yeah? Oh, shoot. Uh, Eddie and Skylar are here, by the way, just until we go. Hey, Roman. Hi. Hey, cool. <laughs> uh, Roman. I saw you. I know, I saw you too. Yeah. I didn't realize it was you. You were like, what the heck? I didn't realize it was you until like you were right next to me. No, it's fast. Yeah. yeah. You go, what are you doing? I'm like waving on yeah. the Yeah. Oh, then I didn't like retro. Oh, so I'm like, hi. I didn't know you were there. Yours kind of sick. I like this. It's, like the it's a mess, nice but yeah. Stuff. Thanks. You have two guitars? You play both of them at the same time? I don't. I play one of them. You play JC Mott. Ah, no. Oh, yeah. Dude, I saw him on the street. What? I got a nine feet tall. I know. We were walking down the street one day. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I'll be right back. Let me shut the door. Okay, I sincerely apologize for that. Um, 
That's actually a giant meme uh, with my stream. It's called the Roxy 2 family, which is really where my family comes in when I'm streaming and then ruins a run. Um, so yeah, back to this. Basically, if you don't make it in that time, in time, you have to go all the way back here, wait for the string to reappear, and then, yeah, it's it's not fun. Uh, I'm making it in second try, but I lose 20, 20 seconds here, and it's not a good situation. But burning is really convenient for these next few sections. It seems like the runes are just made with burning. I missed the door there, but yeah, because switch to burning, perfect. Where you get released back into that main room to the end door, perfect. And we're going to see at the very end of... Um, in this level too, how just how perfect burning is. You just have to puff a couple of times, burn, burn, burn. No, I burned. I puffed a little too much there. But if you burn there, and then yeah, go against this wall, burn, hit the switch, and then you're gonna be right in the door. And if you miss the door with burning, you slide for a year and a half. It's ice physics in this game aren't great. And here's a consistent setup here where I kind of screwed it up because I puffed. But I was able to save it a little bit by um, double bonking there. But that works perfectly. Those UFO UFOs are completely random. And any percent of wheel there in that room with the wheel is so difficult. But these are where any percent and 100% kind of converge again. Releasing our ability to, with an ice block, to double star the Frosty. Um, and heading out, we're going to be heading to the final arena of the run the E66 arena. This is the most difficult arena. You have ice physics. You have to be really quick because if those mace guys like throw their maces forwards, then you're screwed because the stars don't go through the maces. So you have to be really fast. And I play it decently there. Not amazingly, but okay. Um, and now we're heading to Med Knight. Med Knight is completely random. The most, the most sorts of randomness in this run, really. Um, he can either block you, attack you, or jump. Um, and I get an okay pattern here. A few blocks, and he hits me a couple of times. It's not the end of the world. 100% is a lot safer of a category than 90% because uh, every time you hit a switch, you get you heal yourself. So that's really helpful. But now we're heading to the final main world of the game, which is Rainbow Resort, World 7. And with Sword here, we're going to be you know, sorting. This is the block room. Um, it's actually really fun to just go through it. But now, yeah, that's uh, sometimes that can happen if you're jumping to But now we have to grab burning, which I mess up here. This is the worst switch in the game, I think, because not only do you have to grab burning which is not easy also sorry for the screaming that's my brother's friends here that are here um but you have to like jam yourself into that crack right there and then just mash burning in order to make it up and right here this is the ball mix but i accidentally killed the stone in this run so i had to kill myself and get grab ball because if you don't have ball here you're losing a minute probably more um but basically you jump up grab stone the sword guy hold down it's an easy mix if you just get the setup and right here, this is the Cobra Ball swag. Cobra Ball swag, found by Cobra Ball. Um, and yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so next up, this is the most notorious level in the run. This is 7-2. Um, and any percent and 100%, you have ball. And it's, the enemies can be completely random. That bonkers fight was really good. Um, Fan Fan, I got good RNG here. You want him to roll against the wall so you can jump up and jump through him. But as you can see, Ball is just three hitting every, yeah, three hitting all these mini bosses. Bugs gave me a horrible pattern there, where he um, back, backed up then charged. If he just charges immediately, then you can kill him instantly. Then Fireline did not give me a good pattern here, but that's not the end of the world because he grabbed Bird in here anyway, and you can just suck the ball into him and then kill him off. So, yeah, 7-2. It's a fun level when you do it right. When you get screwed by RNG, it's not fun. But that was... 
Good news for you. Yeah. You don't have to pick Alexander up. Okay. But you do have to take Noble. To practice? Yeah. Okay. This is because your room smells horrible. Thank you. Paper, uh, um, okay. Bag. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Put this in there. Cause okay. it's dead. Are you doing laundry? Yeah, I am. Sorry about that. That was my mother. Um, yeah. This is the end of 7 too. If you get hit a lot, you should grab the tomato. I down here, 4 health, I'm confident with. Um, if you're cornfed, I'm sorry, I'm putting the trash back in. Um, the next up is 7 3. Um, this is another fun level. The rest is the rest of the game is very similar to any percent, um, except for one difference in 7 6. But other than that, it's completely the same as any percent. Oh, this is the ice diamond room. You can do jumps up here, but it's really difficult. And I usually don't go for it. And so now this room, you grab candy and just kind of burn through. You need to make sure your burn is your burnings aren't precise. Otherwise, um, you just slide, and that's not fun. What is going on? Next up is 7-4. 7-4 is another difficult level. Um, you have to, this first room especially, um, you have to do a pretty weird setup to get through very enemies. It's still super tight. Um, and these are the clock rooms. Basically, the first two are random, the pigs and the balls, um, or the balls and pigs. And then the next two are in a set order, the brown hubbards and the um, flamers. In the flamer room, you can actually mix for UFO. It's the very it's the same mix as um, six three, but it's actually saves a half second <laughs> optimally. And optimally, it's RNG based. And it's kind of a meme. But I might go for it on GQ, depending if I'm winning or not. It's cool. And I'm actually way too cons I'm way more consistent at it than I am at seven three, which is unfortunate. So. Yeah, seven four with UFO, you can actually do a sequence break in that room, like the only sequence break in the game, where you just hit the bomb block from across the room and you just go straight up. But here we have Spark. This is just what you're supposed to do, really. If you go over UFO, you're considered insane. Um, we can kill these crash bombs before they explode, and these crash bombs have an enormous radius, of, like hitbox radius. So we need to make sure we like don't get anywhere near them. And that wheelie can give bad RNG, with crash especially, because with UFO, you, you crash the wheelie, it needs to spawn another wheelie. If it doesn't, and it cannot spawn another wheelie for years. So, I mean, so I got good RNG there. If it bonks with spark, it's good RNG, because you can kill it really fast. But now we have wheel for the next level and a half. And yeah, this is 7-6. Final level, final switch. And this is kind of, this is like a throwback to Crypt Adventure, throwbacks to Green Greens. Um, and, or yeah, Green Greens from Kirby's Dream Land 1. And yeah, it's a lot of precise wheel movement, wheel jumping. This room especially has killed many runs any percent or 100 percent the cabin room if that cabin down there doesn't move like you just did for me um you can be there for weeks so you do not want to lose wheel uh that cloud room is really difficult with the jumps because the cloud hitboxes are really janky in this game like it looks like it's floor it's not floor and right here this is the last mix in the game this is ball mix it's um, the same exact thing as 5-5 five, five wheel mix, second in the thing, you just have to win a little bit. Then this is the last switch in the game, you have to go in the moon, and bam. On pace for 100%. And that's 7-6, I love 7-6, it's a lot of fun.
Next up, we have the final boss of Rainbow Resort. King DDD, the classic villain. He gave me an insta pattern there, which is the worst pattern you can get. Sup? Hi. Probably should have told my mom. I'm just doing a thing, so that didn't happen. <laughs> but you just kind of ball. It, with a perfect fight, you can kill him in 20 seconds. I got not great RNG there. Yeah, like, it was okay. It wasn't great. I lost four seconds, but yeah. This is orb. This is a nightmare orb. Basically, it takes 60 hits to kill him. And you're just kind of mashing A and B to and following his pattern. It's a set pattern every time. You just gotta make sure he doesn't kill you. Um, probably my least favorite part of the game, honestly, is the orb fight. It's just really boring and annoying, but every Kirby game has to end in a 2 who fighter, so yeah. But then, next up, we have the final final boss. This is Nightmare the Wizard. Oh, I forgot I turned on webcam here. Ignore that webcam. <laughs> Oops. Um, basically, it takes six hits to kill. Um, yeah, pretty simple. There's one. It's a set pattern every time. The only randomness is where he spawns. Um, right there, try to do manipulation to keep him on one side. You have to cross middle of the screen. Like, you have a few frames to do it. Not too many. Don't get to that either. But right here on the fourth hit, you can go for an early hit. Basically, you just damage boost, and you can hit him early before he like releases his cape. Because you have to hit his tornado, not his cape. But before he releases his cape, you can kind of get through it, and you you're able to hit it. And you want to make sure you're hitting with the stars and not the wand. The wand hit does a ton of damage, or the wand hit does nothing. Um, and you see me doing mini pop up there. Yeah, this is my current PB, forty three thirty four. Um. Which, I definitely plan on grinding this a lot more now that Wakaza is taking the world record. Um, and yeah, you have this great high kibby screen. But yeah, that's Kirby Nightmare Dream 100%. And I guess 10 percent as well. Um, I definitely plan on grind my, yeah, 100% PB is a 43-34. World record is a 42-40 on the leaderboard by Wakaza, but he actually just got a 42-21, which is insane. But he doesn't have a video of it, I don't think. He hasn't submitted it to speedrun.com. So... Can't really steal any strats of his, which is unfortunate. But yeah, if you're looking at the splits at all this run, I was a minute ahead past uh, until really until UFOMX. Um, and then everything just kind of went downhill. So yeah, I'm capable of getting a world record. I just need to put my head down and do it. But yeah, the estimate we're going to be spending is 50 minutes, uh, and then 90% estimate is going to be 45 minutes. And it should be a great showcase either way. Um, and it was just shown at SGDQ 2019 with Mr. Shasta, but he there was a few strats that he didn't show off, and then we also show off. And 100% hasn't been shown since 2016, four years ago. Yeah, that really needs to get an update. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hashtag bring back the Kirby block. See you guys later. Bye.